Uh, I'm gonna ring Matt Porter. Let's have a look. Here we go. Should come up on that now. I've got to go somewhere, so I'll do it in car. There we go. So, hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big Pork here. The voice of hardcore boxing, and I'm joined by Matt Porter. How are you doing, Matt? Not bad, mate. Not bad yourself. I'm alright. I'm plodding on. It's a nice day today, isn't it? Yes, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Got the box feeling to do, which uh, I'm looking forward to. You've got a full lot to do. The uh, homeschooling. Homeschooling, are you? Yeah. Right. Can't do any of that. <laughs> so, how long have you been a boxing fan, Matt? Uh, 20, 25 years. I first started when I was I'm 35 now. I remember growing up with my dad watching the uh, the Ben the Eubank fights when he was when he was a kid. And to be honest, I started watching that guy. I used, to, I used to go to bed early. I'd say, Dad, Dad, can I stay downstairs with you and watch the boxing? Yeah, yeah, okay, can you? That's, that's how I started getting into it, really. Alright, that's good then, that. Well, we're a fan friendly channel. We don't discriminate against casuals or hardcores or people who are just starting to watch boxes. So if you've been watching it 30 yeah. years, or you've been watching it yeah. 30 days, you're welcome on the channel if you've everybody's yeah. got an opinion. So we live in a democracy, don't we? Yeah, so, why we love the sport, this is why we love the sport so much. You're nicking my one liners there, Matt, aren't you? <laughs> right, you'll be, get, you be getting your hardcore badge in post now. <laughs> right, uh, you've got some questions for me, I believe, aren't you? Ten questions or around about that? Yeah, just, uh, yeah pretty much. Yeah, just a bit of a chat, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, then fire, fire away, then, uh, Matt, feel free, don't be shy. Yeah, don't. I mean, I, I know you've heard about Dylan like before, but. Mm -hmm. Is he ever going to win a proper world title? He's all going to win a proper world title. Dylan White, is he ever going to win a proper, <coughs> not a vacant one, is he going to win a proper legit well, world title? Uh, well, if you mean legit, do you mean the five belts? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, you don't mean the trinkets, do you? The silver internationals no. and intercontinentals and that. They're all right when you're coming through, but when you're at Dillian White's level, he should be fighting for world titles, shouldn't he? He's had ample opportunity to go for a world title, hasn't he? We agree on that, don't we? Yeah. He's not, uh, he's not been for a European title yet, has he? Yeah, he's what? Not, not yet. He's not fought for a European title yet, so he's not fought for a European title. He's not fought for a world title. Let me just pull up here because the cop, the cop car there, they get everywhere, don't they? <laughs> We're not paying attention anyway. But the uh, point I want to make is uh, that Dylan White's. He's, he's like Eddie Earn's spare part, isn't he? Yeah. That's what he's like. He's Eddie Earn's spare part, and I just think that Eddie Earn needs him on pay per view away from world title fights so he can get them extra pay per views in because. I think Eddie's a bit low on pay-per-view stars, isn't he? When you think I about think he it. Low, yeah. I think he's got Joshua, and who else yeah. has he got after Joshua who's pay-per-view? You're probably struggling now, aren't you? Well, after Joshua, and he's only really got him because they marketed him well, and he looks the part, yeah. doesn't he? But, Oh, is Dylan White a pay-per-view fighter? Has he got an elite win yet? No, he hasn't, has he? Lucas Brown, 40-year-old. Marius Vak, 40-year-old. He fights Povetkin yeah. next. He's 41 in September. So you, yeah. you you tell me, they're, they're not elite wins. They're they're the they're pinching uh, fighters' money. I feel. sorry, fans' money, putting that on. It's it's devaluing the product, watering it down. Everybody in industry knows this, but. Nobody in the industry wants to say anything because they all want to get into that position. There's only me and Boxing I mean, Asylum I saying anything. Yeah, I think it's best way to see the target, and that was a, a, a you know, after both fight, wasn't it? They got some time. You guys didn't look good that fight. Pardon? So the Parker, there was only really just a Parker, it was uh, the beat that. And that was a close fight, that could have went either way. That were a life and death, and. Yeah. 
could have gone either way, mate. Life and death, that fight. And Joseph Parker had been beaten, there were no belts on the line, so it weren't a world title fight, were it? It was somebody that were Anthony Joshua's leftovers. Povetkin is Anthony Joshua's leftovers. He's just had a draw with Hunter that he got beaten, and, and that's why White just took the fight. He didn't want the fight last year. And I just think that if Dillian White uh, carries on like this, he might miss out on a world title. We're not saying he isn't good enough for a world title. I do hammer him, but he's got a world class left hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he's come on leaps and bounds in his 10 wins since he's been with Mark Tibbs, so fair play, but I just think he's being a fool and he's letting himself down, not going for the world title. He had the chance to fight at Wembley for four of the five belts in front of 90,000, five million quid he were offered. Now they've just been saying, and I quote, They've just been saying, well, Ruiz should take the four million to fight uh, Dillian White. What, what's he on about? That's what Dillian White's so-called brother was saying. But, but why? But do, do, what's Dillian got to offer Ruiz? He ain't got a belt to offer him, has he? Nothing. Nothing. He's got not got a belt to offer him. So why should Ruiz fight Dillian White? Why? Why is Dillian making offers? The best belt he's got is Ian John Lewinson, a vacant British, and that were a retirement in 10th round. You know what, mate? Yeah, yeah, okay, really, yeah, that was a British title fight, wasn't it? British title fight, vacant, and he retired in the 10th round. Uh, but Lewinson, so, point I want to make is this, right? He hasn't gone for a European, has he? I don't even think he's got a Commonwealth, to be honest. He's not got, he's got the British, he's not got the Commonwealth, he's not got the European, and he's not got the world. So, how is he calling shots offering Ruiz 4 million? Ruiz is a former unified champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to piggyback off the Saudi PR and get Dillian White another pay-per-view and lift the fans' leg. So will he win a world title fight? No, I don't think he's good enough now. I think he's missed a boat. His time was last year against Joshua at Wembley. So I'm going to put my neck on line and say, Dillian White has missed the boat. Yeah. Same as Billy Joe's missed the boat. Billy Joe's missed the boat as well. Another one. What I want to know with White is who's advising him not to sit. Well, he's his own manager. He's his own manager. What? You know, you're thinking a bit of common sense and the thing. You know what? I can beat this. I can beat you after it. Last year was a tactic game. I was vulnerable. Yeah. So, so it's one. It's one of them things, isn't it, mate? But like I said, uh, I think he's missed the boat now. So. Still there, Ross? Yeah, I mate. Mean, mate, go on, yeah. 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 Uh, thing one I was going to say was, uh, do you think what these boxing back to Bob Brown this year? Do I think what? Do you think we'll see boxing return with the crowds this year? Uh, I hope so, because uh, from a selfish point of view, I hope so because I want I want our stable to do well with Dennis. I want I want to the, the, to yeah. be sell out shows and that, but I'm having my doubts. Yeah, it's just we're going to get that uh, title fight. Josh will uh, will get a world title fight. I don't know if it'll be this year though. But he will get Tommy Frank fights on September 11th for a world title at yeah. Ponds Ford, subject to government regulations and border control regulations. So that's not set in stone. And Eddie Hearn's July show is not set in stone either. He's not telling everybody the truth. That's come from border control. Yeah. He's getting his, himself a little bit carried away. There's a lot of ifs and buts and all that. And yeah. I think personally, I won't put it past him doing all this to uh, cheap keep fighters on the toes and get some PR about being the best and being innovative and all that. Because I look at it like this, right? When people start chatting nonsense on social media, like he does, I always think the opposite, especially when it's boxing. It's like this computer game that he's doing. What's happening with that? It's all gone quiet, that, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so that was just something he probably said a few weeks ago just to be different. But uh, so that's just my opinion on that. So uh, is that feud between Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren gonna prevent big fights getting made? Is what? Is the feud between 
between uh, Hearn and Warren. Is the feud between Hearn and Warren going to stop big fights getting made? Well, they've put how many fights have they put on in, in, in since Eddie Hearn's uh, took reign at Matthew match from last ten years? Frankie Gavin for. Uh, Skeet, Denny and Eggington for Skeet, Denny, is that the only two? I think they might have put one more on. So if they're going to put three on in ten years, they're never going to work together, are they? No, I think, I think that the feud is more on, uh, on Warren's side as well. Yeah. I think Eddie Hearn knows how to get to him, how to kiss him up a little bit. And he always takes the bait, doesn't he, Frank? Well, you've got to look at it, you've got to look at it like this, Matt. Uh, Eddie Hearn signed a lot of... Uh, He's fight Frank's fighters, and a lot of them have crossed the street. So, and they're never going to get on out of these families. They've been at it since the 80s. These two families yeah. going at it, and it, it is. It needs to, boxing needs to change for itself. These two families shouldn't have the monopoly on boxing. There's more promoters than just these two. So. Could you see them working together and maybe get their own TV deal? I know Hobson said he's got his deal with Eurosport. Yeah, and BBC iPlayer. Yeah, but it's even like Phil Jeffries, Steve Wood, Goodwin. Why don't they work together? Uh, we, we have worked with Phil Jeffries before and we've worked with Phil Jeffries on a handshake and no contract sign because he's a very honourable person. Phil Jeffries, Dave Garside. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I very much doubt that Dennis would work with Steffi Bull again, uh, yeah. unless he apologises for some nonsense that he's been spreading. But I doubt he'll work with him again. I think that boat was sailed for Steffi. He's now had to hitch his ride to Eddie Hearn, hasn't he? If you notice on his Twitter, yeah. people get sending me screenshots. Every time Eddie Hearn farts, Steffi Bull retweets it, doesn't he? Or pulls his yeah. tongue out and gets it up Eddie Hearn's arsehole. So, but uh, personally, I don't like Steffi Bull, and when I see him, we're going to be at it. But uh, if he wants to get at it, or he can hide behind his missus's skirt. But point I want to make is, no, I don't see him working with Dennis again. If he did work with Dennis again, I would not want to work with Dennis again. So, I'll put Dennis in an awkward situation there. Unless he wants to come and apologise, maybe we might throw him a bone then. But now he's got to hang out at back of Eddie Hearn now. Because he can't go to, he can't work with Warren, can he? Because if he does, he's tainted, isn't he? Because what happens yeah. is when you work with Eddie Hearn, he poisons everybody not to go work with Frank Warren, so people panic and they don't do it. So he, he's had to hitch his ride to Eddie Hearn now, and he needs to milk this situation with Terry Harper because if she packs in, I don't know what he'd do because he doesn't tweet about any one of his other fighters, does he? But that's up to him, but. No, I don't think that small hall promoters are going to get TV. To have TV when you be a small hall, I don't like to use the word small hall, let's say small arenas, but to, to have TV, you've got to be selling out arenas and have a decent enough stable, or love boxing that much that you're not frightened of, of, put, of spending a few quid and losing money on shows. Dennis is not frightened to lose money on shows. Uh, people like Steffi Bull, other people like him, they rely on ticket deals and if you're not done it and they're on your case every day how many tickets you sold how many tickets you sold so what happens is when there's a week to go if you haven't sold enough tickets they'll pull you off at show because they can't afford to pay your opponent that's why they call it small yeah. all but if you go and look at Steffi Bull's last whatever 10 shows go and look on the right hand side all the opponents look at their records and then look at them all them on the left the, the knockovers, they're all knockovers. If you've got a problem with this, come see me. But they're all knockovers. And, and that's not how boxing should be going. So I don't see him promoting again for a long, long time. I see him being a manager and putting his fighters on other people's shows. I don't see him putting a show on for a, a good year, easily a good year. I think he's finished as a promoter and I think he knows that now. So if they, if they can't sell tickets, they're done, aren't they? What are they going to do? So they know in it box and they can't turn the hand to anything else, can they? Oh. He's not quite well with Terry Harper. I think he's done a very good manager. He's done well, hasn't he, for her? He's done well for her because there's no British title fights for him, is there? She, she's ended up with an IBO and she's won a WBC. Uh, so you've got to take, give the girl credit. Uh, she's got a big Steffi Bull bull on inside of her arm, so she's obviously joined the cult. 
But uh, it's Eddie Hearn who promotes her now, isn't it? Steffi Ball the promotes her, Eddie Hearn promotes her. Steffi Ball manages her and Ray Doyle trains her. Although you might see it when they get on telly, you might see Ray Doyle get pushed to one side and Steffi Ball be known as a trainer. But the facts are, Ray Doyle is her trainer, all right? But now she's on TV, she's got a bit of fame. You'll probably see Steffi Bull as a trainer, but we all know that Ray Doyle's the one that's done all the donkey work. Just get that out there. Shout out Ray Doyle, hope you're well mate. All the best to your family. Froch Calzaghi, what do you mean, at the peak? It's not gonna happen now, is it? But in the peak, uh, 2008, 2009, Carl Froch against 2004, 2005, Carl Zaggi. It's a coin toss, but I would have to go Carl Froch by KO because he's my man. But the be the bookies would say uh, Carl Zaggi points, wouldn't they? That's what the bookies would say, and most of the fans would say, but I'm going to back my man. So I'd say Carl Froch by KO. I believe that in 2008, when they should have fought, and Joe Calzaghi took it to the 270th day, in 2008, when they should have fought, I believe he were there for the taking, that he didn't fight Froch, he didn't fight Clinton Woods, that fight were agreed, he were there to be beat. And he knew it, because everybody knew we were cutting corners in training. Jones and Hopkins dropped him in the first round. Now, I don't think Clinton Woods and Froch would have let him off a hook like those two 40-odd year olds did, do you? No, I don't either. There you go, you know your boxing, Matt. Yeah. I mean, I would have backed out like he's born and he came again like he's going to do the contest. Once the first chin, once the warrior, he looked at the skills. Yeah. You what, mate? Yeah, off. Oh, it's been a hell of a fight. It'd still be a good fight now, but it's a ten rounder, isn't it? At under the seventy-five pound, or maybe one eight five, and they won't be at the peaks, would they? And it'd be a novelty act, wouldn't it? But I'd like to see it. But it's a bit like I'd like to see Mike Tyson only feel free, but it won't be fair on fans to pay that money and for them to come and get millions, would it? No, so he was finished when he fought Danny Williams in 04. Yeah, so he's not going to be 15 years since then. 15 years since McBride, didn't he? And he quit then. He quit in his last two fights. When have you ever seen Mike Tyson in a close fight that he's won? Never. He's a bully, schoolyard bully. When you stand up to him, gets beat. Besides, I don't respect him anyway because he's a convicted rapist. And didn't he beat that old couple up and get jailed for that? So, how can you respect somebody like that? I can't do, can I? To all them people who keep going on about. He's one of your own, is what is this and that. And the man's a convicted rapist and he, he, he did that old coupling, didn't he, in Maryland and got jailed for that. So, as far as I'm concerned, anybody who does that to old people and rapes women, not my kind of person. So, I don't want to see him get millions of pounds, you know. All Mike Tyson fans watching this, fuck you. So, yeah, go on, you were saying. Yeah, judges, judges, and, uh, do they need to be held accountable? Yeah, they do need to be held accountable. I want to see judges uh, accountable in interviews for what they've done. I want to see them accountable for what they've done in in fights. You know where they've give shocking judging scoring. Yeah. I want to see them accountable for that kind of behaviour. CJ Ross, I would have liked to have seen her do an interview. I'd like to see Terry O'Connor come out and explain how Yui Fury lost against Parker. There's all sorts of judges that I'd like to see come and do interviews and say, well, this is why I scored it like this. But, you know, give their version, oh, I like front foot fighters, or I like back foot fighters, whatever, or ring generalship. I'd like to see judges come out and do interviews, like I'd like to see referees come out and do interviews. So yeah, Adelaide Bird, Adelaide, Adelaide Bird. Adelaide Bird, big another big favourite of Golden Boy. CJ Ross, a big favourite of Golden Boy. So yeah. he's getting a joke, a really getting a joke. I mean somehow you can get close fights where you get a few close rounds that could go either way. But some of them are just absolutely disgusting. Where you, you, you can't argue with some of them are absolutely terrible. Anything you feel for the fighters. Let me just do this interview, Carl. Oh, two seconds, mate.
Just doing this interview, are you alright for a chat, yeah? Yeah, I'm just going home now. You're going home? Yeah. I'll follow you up to yours then, yeah? Alright. Yeah, go on, Matt, you were saying. I said some of them, you get the close fighting and put up an argument for the fight going either way, but some of them are absolute. Oh, listen, mate, some of this judging that's going on at the moment, mate, is, is shocking. It's, uh, it, it needs looking at, mate, doesn't it? Yeah, people say, people say Jamie's bad, we are worse than Jamie, without a doubt. Oh, listen, mate, we're the new Germany now. The worst ever fight that I've ever seen for judging has got to be Robin Reed Svenok, huh? Uh, I could say Robin Reed against Carl Zaggy, but Robin says to me, we're close fighting, you know, Russ. But he had a point took off him, didn't he, because it were a Warren show. But I think Robin Reed against Otka's the worst one. I think Matthew Macklin's one against Sturm, or he, he got well shafted against Felix Sturm. So yeah, yeah. No, 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 mate, no. But uh, I think that was shocking. Uh, and I see the Manny Pacquiao, Tim Bradley. I don't know what we're going on with that one. Lennox Lewis against Holyfield. You know. Yeah. Canelo Golovkin. The first one. Canelo Golovkin. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Al Canelo. Oh, who was it? CJ Ross have it a draw, didn't she? Against Mayweather. Yeah. That were bad. Yeah. So, yeah, what, 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 yeah, your mate Adam Smith. Adam Smith, what do I think to him? I think he's creepy, and I think that he comes out with stuff for effect. He's a spin doctor, I've got no time for him, and he wants sacking. Adam Smith, you want sacking. I don't like you, I want you sacking. I'm not gonna say, hey up Adam, you all right mate? He's all right, Adam, around all them boxing people, because everybody in the boxing industry can't stand him, but they're not gonna say anything to him because he's got too much power. Adam Smith, I don't fucking like you. You're creepy. So that's that sorted. <laughs> People should just say what they think, shouldn't they? There's too many snowflakes about, isn't there? Yeah, I think, I mean, and Eddie Hearn, it seems to me, Eddie Hearn's having much to do with it. He's like, yes, sir, no, sir. Yeah, Eddie Hearn runs the show. He's in charge, Eddie Hearn, I can assure you, mate. He's running the gaff. Yeah. Yeah, the dog wagging the tail, but in this case, it's the tail wagging the dog. Isn't it? Tail's wagging dog, isn't it? Because they've got 17% of all sport that output on, on on Sky. They're in charge of 17% of the programming for Sky, so they've got a big big say in everything, aren't they? And Sky have had a lot of cancellations, so they need to get out of there and get earning, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the journalists don't help either, but I mean, when they do interviews with uh, the next, I'm a Yeah. They don't put no pressure in. No, they don't put no pressure on. Do you know what? Could you imagine if I were asking questions to them, even on the telephone, I would terrorise them, wouldn't I? Terrorise them. That's why, they, that's why they give me a wide berth, mate. I ought to put some more billboards up and proper terrorise them, didn't I? I ought to go put five billboards up and waste ten bags, didn't I, on it? And terrorise them about what they really, really are and what really goes on, didn't I? But, you know, it'd be a waste of money and, like I said, the ones that I've already had put up were a waste of money. Cause, yes. Yeah, just a waste of money, just an ego trip. But we learn, don't we? We, we have to try. We, we, we live and learn. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, belts? Do belts really matter anymore? I don't think Tyson Fury should bother about belts. When he fights Joshua, he should just throw him away because, as far as I'm concerned, he's won everyone now. And why would he give Joshua yeah. a chance to win a belt that he's not got? He should bin the lot of them because they treat him like a dog, didn't they? So why would he want to win them yeah. all the belts back? I know. So, he w the he's the number one everywhere in the world. Without a shadow of doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, most uh, overrated fighter in Britain, what do you think? Overrated fighter in Britain, what, who's retired or still active? No, not uh, still active. Well, uh, Conor Ben. Conor Ben yeah. is the mo most overrated fighter in the UK at the moment. He's got a WBA, what, number six? 
and he's been winning ever since, so as he climbed higher, I don't know, but he was WBA number six and he was fighting guys ranked 300 on box record, then 200 and odd, yeah. and then 170 and all that, but yeah, he's a world number six. You, when you're world number six, you're supposed to move forward, aren't you? You can't go get an high ranking like that, then go fighting guys who are journeymen. So he's the most overrated, and I hope Anthony Tomlinson ices him when he fights him, or Johnny Garson, yeah. or whoever. I hope Frankie Gavin comes back and punches him upside down because he's a fraud living off his dad's name. So he's a gimmick. Yeah, I agree. Too many gimmicks. Yeah, I, say Callum, I agree. I say Callum Smith, but I don't think Callum Smith does. Callum it's Smith nearly got to Olympics though, didn't he? And yeah, he's a good fighter, Callum Smith. He nearly got to Olympics. He's been protected, but no, I don't think he's overrated. Yeah. He's very good. He's just that he's had a lot of luck and earned a lot of money by not taking many risks. But that's his manager's job to get him in that situation and his manager, although I don't like him either and how he conducts himself, his manager's done a fantastic job for him and all them Smiths, they should all thank Joe Gallagher because no matter what, Joe Gallagher don't put his fighters in a fight unless they're getting proper paid. Like so Paul Smith for finished... Go on. I was going to say, he might leave them in the fight a bit too long, but... Yeah. yeah. So... Is that it? That's pretty much it for Right then, well listen, thank you very much for coming on the channel, I hope you're well, you and your family, I hope you're all self-isolating, and uh, well I'll have to have you on again Matt, is that alright? Yeah, yeah, cheers for that pocket. No problem, well you take care Matt, all the best. Thank you. Cheers, cheers mate, bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.